Okay, gents, switching gears now, focusing on a big, big game in the Premier League on Sunday. Arsenal against Crystal Palace. Can Arsenal momentarily go eight points clear atop the Premier League table as we're in this spring and it's getting very, very serious now, this title push for Arsenal? Or can Crystal Palace and Wilf Sahar, can they cause a bit of a shock? Uh, massive game at the Emirates. I'll be there for PST, so make sure to head over to the site for all the live analysis and reaction uh, from the press box and all angles covered at the Emirates. Uh, I was at Arsenal's game last weekend, lads, against Fulham. They brushed them aside. We expected a bit of a tough test there for the Gunners, but they were 3-0 up at half time. Could have been six. It don't seem to me, Nick, like they're feeling the pressure at all right now. There, there is no real cracks in their play. There is no uh, slowing down in the intensity. Yes, they've had to come back and win a few games in um, crazy circumstances against Villa and Bournemouth in recent weeks, but this Fulham game just kind of answered all the questions I had about Arsenal's title bid in a very resounding way. So I'm going to ask you this question. What is the best thing about this Arsenal side at the moment? Because Trossard, Martinelli, Odegaard were sublime against Fulham. Gabriel Jesus returned. They have so many great attacking options. And there's just so much to like about this Arsenal side, isn't there? So what stands out for you? Yeah, and again, I'm not insulting anyone's actual intelligence on the Arsenal team, but they're 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 so young and they're so dumb. They don't realize mm. at all. And I know that can become yeah. a yeah, stereotype, yeah. but look at they should have. I think a a team with older, slightly older players and more experience after that Man City game doesn't fight through their battles in the next game and get it. And yeah. I, I want to even point to the first leg against Sporting. Uh, they score early. Uh, another team says, all right, we're fine. They go down 2-1, and it's like, all right, well, we'll just go get that equalizer. That was the one that told me I've been overlooking how hard it – not how hard it is for Man City. I think Man City is going to – they might not lose again, <laughs> except, you know. Yeah. But I don't know that Arsenal is going to lose except against Man City because they have yet to prove me they could do it. So uh, the resilience – but resilience is even a funny term. I don't even think they realize how, that they're doing something they shouldn't be doing right now. Yeah, Andy, is that the kind of best thing that Mikel Arteta has created? It's just like this expectancy and self-belief within the team, like we deserve to be here, even though when you look across the team and as great a January signing Trossard has been, he hasn't been in this situation in the Premier League before, but he comes straight in, fits in seamlessly, has three assists. I caught up with him after the win at Fulham and he was, you know, I asked him about the fans chant and we're going to win the league, which was the first time I've heard Arsenal fans singing that pretty much all season and it was consistent and he just smiled and said you know we want to give the fans the belief just take it game by game step by step the cliches were rolled out but you can tell this Arsenal team now almost believe that they should be winning the title so is that dangerous in a way or they've kind of earned the right to be in this situation where they can go eight points clear of course City will have a game in hand because they're in FA Cup action this weekend but this is now getting down to the end of the season where Everything seems to be going in Arsenal's direction right now. And like Nick mentioned, they responded really well after that setback against Man City. So I, I didn't see this coming. I don't know if you did. Yeah, it, it was all jokes about 10 months ago when they <laughs> blew top four and Spurs finished above them. And how could they possibly do that? I think they learned a lot from it, though. And so I don't think they're maybe quite as young and inexperienced and dumb and naive, you know, to use a couple of, of, of you know, kind of parallel words there as we're making them out to be, because they have been in some big moments. A, a top four race coming down to the final day of the season is a is a, a fairly big moment for a young team that I think a lot of people would even argue, like we keep saying this year, oh, they're a year or two ahead of schedule. They were a year or two ahead of schedule last year to be in that position, I think, <laughs> even though they didn't have European competition to contend with, and that played a bit of a factor in that. They they were really good for a large portion of last season, and it just all fell apart and crumbled at the very end. And I think what they have learned is, you know, obviously it's a 38-game season. You have to keep that consistency and you have to keep that belief. But I, it's, it's, it's pretty incredible to watch uh, a young team like that all pulling in the same direction with the you know the spirit that that is there at the club because that has been the biggest thing that I think you could easily anytime you watch Arsenal take the field in the last you know I guess about 10 or, or so years and say oh that doesn't feel right there's something that's off there they don't believe or there's just negative vibes around the stadium there's negative vibes within the team yeah. you know are the players playing for the manager is he the right like a lot of questions and all of those have been answered and and you know to to my surprise a, a little bit 
it is Mikel Arteta who who is who has answered all those questions and has put this team together um, and has them playing, you know, one A, one B, uh, just in terms of entertainment and style alongside Manchester City in, in the Premier League. So uh, it, it does feel like they have all of the ingredients and all of the pieces in place. It is now just about uh, to use the cliches that that Leandro used. Game by game, just go out and get your result and get your result. If they can go eight points clear, even with City having a game in hand, it feels that has to be insurmountable, right? Like that, it has to be. <laughs> yeah, it's cutting close to that stage. Um, Nick, would you start Gabby Jesus this weekend or would you kind of keep it flowing with Martinelli and Trossard and the false nine? Just the way they interchanged against Fulham just keeps defenders guessing and having nightmares, right? They were just ghosting around everywhere. Odegaard a bit more advanced as well, works really well. So they have a lot of options, don't they, Arsenal? And I spoke to Arteta about this. I said almost, you know, injuries aren't good, but the fact that Jesus and then Nketiah went down with an injury, it's kind of forced them to find different styles and different roles for their players. And it's worked really, really well. So I'm kind of thinking, just build up Jesus. Don't start him at the weekend, but he'd be great to come off the bench with 30 minutes to go against Palace. I don't know if, I don't know if, if fixture congestion is going to allow that. I, I just really don't. If he's got 60 minutes in him and you're talking about a Palace team that is not exactly breaking people down and you can, you, you're going to, you know, you're, or I'm sorry, keeping from people from breaking them down. Um, if he's got 60 minutes in him or at least a half, I might want to do it. Uh, I might just want to bite the bullet. I think Arsenal has learned very well from Liverpool. Like Eddie Nketiah is a good player. He is not a star. And Trossard is a very, very good player. He may soon be a star, but he is not a superstar. And yet they're going to end up having us talking about them. Like Liverpool has sold so many players for $30 million who end up doing nothing because they've built them up within their system. And I'm Mm -hmm. starting to feel like that's what's going on at Arsenal. Smith Rowe may go somewhere this summer for a stupid fee because of the reputation he's earned in the system. So I would play, don't don't lose sight of what Gabby Jesus was. If he's fit and he wants to start and he can give you an hour, he starts. Um, I just think there are a lot worse situations. What about Palace then, Andy? I mean, they've, what, 11 games now without a win in the Premier League. Uh, Can they cause a shock? I mean, Will Sahar, he's got some history against Arsenal and generally against the big boys. I feel like we're always talking about, oh, Palace pulled one out of the bag there. They just don't look like scoring a lot right now. And that's a problem for a lot of the teams at the bottom. So Palace, maybe not this weekend, but do you think they can get themselves out of this mess? Yeah. Do, do you need to score goals to win games? I, I think you do. And, and you mentioned, yeah, you mentioned 11 games without a win. They've scored four goals in those 11 games. They haven't scored multiple goals in a game since their last win, which was, I, I believe, the, the second game after returning from the World Cup break. It's it's really, really dire. Uh, the, the midfield doesn't create chances. It's literally get the ball to Wolf Saha, hope that he can beat his first defender and then the help defender and then the emergency defender and place a shot into the far corner. That's absolutely part. Like that is the only formula that they have at the moment. And it's just, it's, it's pretty easy to snuff out. And so, yeah, it's going to be a tough one now. Zero, zero, maybe within the realm of possibility if Arsenal struggle to finish their chances, if Palace can make it just kind of an ugly game, break it up with fouls and, and uh, you know, but, but, I mean, that's such a negative way of setting out to play. Maybe you, you know, if you get to the 60 minute mark and it's somehow nil nil, then you can try it. But I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a big, big ask for Palace, even with Arsenal coming off of of Europa League on Thursday. It's just the the difference in quality of Arsenal and, and a Palace team that has on the season in 27 games has put together 24 expected goals is, you know, it's it's a real golfing class. Nick, with all that in mind, prediction for this weekend, easy home win for Arsenal? I mean, the way you didn't even mention, there's a 19-year-old goal in goal for Palace because the starters, first two, the John Stone and uh, Guaita are out. So, And Lukonga can't play. He wasn't great against Brighton, but he's been fantastic for them. Uh, only thing they can hang the head on is they won the XG battle. So I'm going very heavy <laughs> to Arsenal here. I don't think – I think this is big for Arsenal, another win. Uh, Andy? Yeah, you really sold me on Palace there, Nick. Uh, yeah, 3 0 to Arsenal, I think, in this one again. I'm going to go for a bit of a thriller. Maybe this is just because of the game I'm going to be at this weekend, and I love yeah. like a five or six goal thriller. But I'm going to go 3 2 to Arsenal. I just think they have it in them, like we've seen against Villa and Bournemouth, to give up big chances, 
Um, and I, I just think Palace, something about Wilf Sahar playing against Arsenal just causes problems. And again, the pressure is almost off for Palace, right? No one's expecting them to go to Arsenal and get anything. I think that might actually suit them a little bit and they might actually come out of their shell. But Arsenal will win. And uh, I think everyone will be happy in that side of North London. So head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com for the latest preview, how to watch information. I'll have not live analysis from Arsenal against Crystal Palace this Sunday. Massive game in the title battle. And yes, Arsenal can go momentarily. Eight points clear at the top of the table. City will have a game in hand. But my word, that gap almost seems insurmountable uh, for Arsenal if they can get the win against Palace this weekend. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.